I believe that we can all agree that the role of independent and high quality media has grown during the past years. People are more willing to pay for media products. Growing customer demand for high quality digital content and willingness to pay for it has compensated well the decline of traditional print media products and advertising. Sanoma Media Finland has succeeded well in taking the full advantage of these emerging trends. However, looking back, let's say five to ten years, it was not something that was clear or that we took for granted. Okay, so my, my name is Iris Lahti. Uh, I joined Sanoma in 2012 and it was a very different company back then. We had a dream of one Sanoma joining forces from Netherlands and Benelux media operations with the media operations in Finland and with the growing learning business. Print newspapers and magazines were still the major source for revenues in all media operations, as well as tra traditional linear TV channels and radio. We knew back then that the digitalization is going to transform the business and started to test and investigate the possibilities of digital marketing and product design. We also knew that data would be one of the key enablers for the transformation. Looking back, our vision for data was bold and the market was probably not completely ready for the solutions we, we invented. We had to basically build data management platforms on ourselves as there were no ready-made solutions yet. Advertising ecosystem was also not ready for the sophisticated machine learning based targeting solutions. But we tried and we failed, uh, we learned and finally also succeeded. In this presentation, I will share some learnings from this journey with you and hopefully they will inspire you to be bold in your data development efforts. So I really believe that Sanoma, uh, Sanoma uh, has been successful and, and data has had a big role in that. And it's, it's very easy to say that now that data has been one of the success factors for Sanoma Media Finland. Um, it is funny that whenever there is data presentation, there is somebody coding or a screen full of uh, ones and zeros. Um, yes, the technology played a big role, not denying that. But uh, the big thing for Sanoma was the ability to use data, transform the way we operated with data and learn how to innovate and base our decisions to data. First, I think we were lucky to have such a deep collaboration between the data and the business. The business understood the importance of data and it was in the core of the business strategy and in operational plans. For a news media, this means delivering the right content at the right time to the right audience by referring to recommendations or personalization features in news sites and applications. For consumer sales, this means finding the right subscription models and brands and products for the consumers who are willing to pay for high quality content. It also means deepening the customer dialogue and relationship by extending the use of our media portfolio. And it means monetization of the media audiences as effective targeting capabilities for advertisers. It was important to us to link every project to these strategic themes and, and targets and give the analysts and data engineers and data scientists a possibility to focus and, and be relevant also for the business. So building the trust towards data was a continuous development theme and also a bit of a struggle for us. The editors became hungry for data and it needed to be available for them when they needed it. The more important decisions were based on data, the more important it was to have it right. Also motivation and competencies towards using the data solutions played a key role. Trainings and guidance of how to use the data solutions was as, as important as developing the solutions itself. As the classical saying goes, the data that is not used has no value. We also learned the importance of data usability. I said earlier that it was not about the technology that much, but in this case, for example, switching to a modern dashboarding tool was an important step towards getting the user, users more excited of using the data and improving the data accessibility and usability for them. To sum it up, uh, it all starts with good data quality. Selecting and implementing tools is also an important step. But the big change happens when the competencies, motivation and excitement of using data is in place. It nourishes a culture of continuous database innovation and fact-based decision making. We talked about digitalization and transformation from traditional media products. The truth is that the print or linear TV or especially radio, it's actually not dead yet or not going to be in the near future. 
During these years, they have transformed and also found new younger audiences and customers. And there has been also a lot of innovation, iteration and renewal of these products. The big change happened when we learned how to continuously test and experiment and optimize the products so that they would be interesting for the cost customers uh, and easy to buy and use. We actually fell in love with the good old conversion optimization and A-B testing and we integrated designers, analysts and data scientists to the virtual growth hacking teams to ensure that data is available and used whenever possible. One of the biggest learnings was also uh, to use a wide range of methods to improve the customer understanding. Designers preferred service design methods. They provide a way to make a deeper dive into customer motivations, core needs, fears and dreams. We also used consumer research to investigate trends and brand image, NPS or other indicators of customer satisfaction. Data is used to target sales campaigns and offerings and features to the customers. But combined to consumer research and service design, it became an even, even more powerful tool. It was not about debating what method is the winning one, but about learning how to use these together. Uh, in building the stronger collaboration, we also did some mistakes. At first, we announced when, when uh, for example, I joined Sanoma 2012, that data scientists will be the future for Sanoma, the sexiest job there is. Obviously, this aroused a lot of resistance, as it is the house of brilliant editors and marketeers and developers. And gradually we learned how to work more as a team uh, with analysts and data scientists being an equal member. One of the biggest uh, or, or the best ways to develop the collaboration and teamwork was ha having hackathons. There we could, we could test the wildest ideas and work together on one topic per day, which is quite rare <laughs> actually, and collaborate with others, all equally important. In advertising sales, the key to the success was the ability to scale and productize. After years of piloting and testing, it was the business then who finally made the strong decisions to go all in with the database targeting capabilities. It required some new tools, a lot of competence building and the right time to go to the market, but then it was worth it. Now, most of advertising spending is targeted using data modeling in the background. Uh, and it has also opened up a new kind of data sharing and collaboration with the advertising customers. Part of the success was also learning how to use the existing and emerging technologies, not to build everything by ourselves and optimize the toolkit when the time is right. I think we had altogether three major migrations during my almost seven years at Sanama. Uh, don't get me wrong, tools are important and critical enablers, but how you use them will make the difference and help you create value for the investment. Growing the maturity of, of the business to using data required also building understanding what there is below the surface. Things such as good data governance, architecture design, integrations, data security, privacy, master data management, uh, they seem often very distant and irrelevant for the business users. But helping them to understand the importance of this work will increase the quality of the collaboration and also increase the understanding of what it requires to design and build and maintain and optimize a high quality data asset. So that was a short introduction to my learnings at Sanoma and how data enabled uh, succeeding in, in the transformation. As a summary, I would say that the best thing that happened to our data team was going back to basics, focusing again on the usability of data. It's like in that picture, designing and developing data experiences that makes people's lives, lives simple, that is exactly what data should do for its user, make their life more simple and help them succeed in their work better. When I left Sanoma in January 2019, I took this learning and had an idea that there might be actually something more to it. During my years at Sanoma, we experimented design thinking methods uh, together with Clemens, who is going to talk next, um, in designing better data solutions and had really, really positive experiences with it. We call it simply data design. I will explain you shortly what it means and let also my former colleagues uh, explain their learnings and experiences of the same topic. So design thinking methods can be used to find the underlying motivations and feelings and core needs of the user, innovating new solutions and optimizing the overall user experience. Design thinking methods uh, can be also applied to our for data solutions, as they are designed most often with an employer or a team or a customer in mind. 
Focusing more time on building user understanding in the first phases of the data development project will save a lot of development effort and iterations in the later phases. It will also help to improve the collaboration and communication of the data solutions between the developers and analysts and business users, resulting in a higher user satisfaction and ability to create value from data. However, most often data solutions can't be designed only based on what the end user wants. The data might not be available or fit for the purpose. There might, be, m there might not be enough development capacity, as there might be other solutions that have higher priority. The solution might increase uh, the user satisfaction, but the wider business value creation potential might not be that high. There might be data security or privacy risks that the organization is not willing to take. Do these challenges sound familiar to you? Um, I think it's hard to define a simple toolkit or of methods that would work for every organization or project. We promote flexibility in selecting the methods based on organization culture, team competencies, and working models, and solution complexity. The main principle in user-centric development of a data solution is to continuously improve your understanding of the core user needs and challenge your ideas about the potential solutions. In general, typical design projects contain these type of phases. First, discovering and understanding the user needs. Second, evaluating ideas based on business value creation potential, technical feasibility and risks. Third, uh, innovating potential solutions for solving the user needs. Uh, fourth, experimenting alternative solutions and validating value creation potential. And in the fifth phase, productizing, testing, optimizing and monitoring the final solution after it has been taken into use. I'm head of data science at Sonoma, mm, and my background is in cognitive computer science uh, or machine learning. Um, and after that, uh, I, I sort of sidetracked side into uh, design thinking when I stumbled upon uh, Alto Design Factory in, in uh, Otaniemi, um, and that really kind of got me into this world of uh, yeah, design thinking. And, and um, at that point, then I started thinking that maybe. You know, I started already seeing the value that uh, how, how great these things could be together. And then actually there's a way to kind of, um, yeah, bring in sort of user centricity into, let's say, data design or design of da data driven products. Trouble is with these design tools that there is a whole world of them out there. And if you just throw people into that uh, wild sea, then, you know, they get lost. And it's actually pretty frustrating, to be honest. Um, so you need to kind of experiment uh, which tools are best tailored for that specific dom domain that you're applying it to. And yeah, with data, uh, we iterated a few times already, and now this is basically being taken further with the data, data design uh, canvases that you're doing. So uh, that's really great to see. We also concluded that there was no single canvas from existing models that would fit perfectly to the data development work. Since there are a lot of aspects to investigate and take into consideration, we decided to develop a canvas to help the design work. The canvas is applicable to any data solution design project. You can use it in a very light way to evaluate your existing idea or have a bit more extensive project by gathering information more widely across the organization. You can use it to evaluate a single idea or generate multiple ideas for comparison. When designing data solutions, it is quite unlikely that you can deliver exactly what the users need. Usually, there are a few things to consider, such as what benefits would the solution create for the business, customers, employees, or operations? What is the technical readiness to start developing the solution by meaning data architecture, accessibility, quality, and fit to the purpose? What is the operational readiness to take it into use by meaning processes and competencies and willingness to adopt the new tools? Are there any risks of fading or delaying in the product development or does the data solution contain otherwise privacy or security risks? And also, do you have enough development and maintenance capacity and skills available to develop the solution? Uh, 
Uh, I currently work as head of data at Finnair, which is the national airline in Finland. And uh, my role is to help all our units from operations and commercial to customer experience utilize the full potential of our data for the business value. And I think what has been really challenging is to how to really focus the effort and of developments to, to create the actual business value, how to measure that and, and how to prioritize your actions to, to focus on the right things. And this, this is where the uh, data design comes into play. And I think it's, it's a great method and, 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 and has great tools to really help the, the teams to focus on the most essential stuff. The biggest benefits for the uh, data solution development canvas and the tools, in my opinion, is that it gives a tool for the whole team to work together uh, as the data solutions development is really a cross-functional effort and there are different types of, of uh, experts working together. The, the canvas really brings them together and creates a kind of a joint vocabulary to, to define what is needed and, and what are the benefits, what are the possible risks, what are the uh, requirements. And, uh, and that also helps then the, the whole team not only to understand the, the problem and the solution in, in the same way, but it also creates them the uh, really the ability to work together, which increases definitely the uh, team spirit and, and, and everybody feels that they are really involved, they are really heard and, and they can contribute to the, the final content. And I think that's, that's really important. So if there is one thing you should remember from this presentation is the user-centric design of data solutions. My experience is that it will make all the difference in your ability as a data professional to create value for your business, your users and your customers. So the next time you're about to start developing a solution, remember to first stop and think. Then start asking questions to really understand what your users want and need. And only then start to develop the solution. I, I promise it will make all the difference. Thank you.